Gathering Waves is right around the corner and I am super excited for it. Today, we're reacting to some videos about it. I have seen basically nothing of the game. This is my raw reaction and it's raw. Real raw. Come to the stream down below to watch things like this live. Let's get right into it. The Withering Waves devs opened up about the myriad changes to the game in the last several months, and the results are incredible. Joined by Rexland, they began characters. by acknowledging the criticisms of the first closed beta test, saying they took all pieces of feedback to heart. From there, they addressed really cool. every main issue players raised concerns about. Unsurprisingly, a huge pain point for players was how visually dull the open world was. It looked like when Genshin, but ex yeah, extremely dull, like very flat colors. And I played the previous closed beta Look test. I could tell the environment that is. had potential, but also felt the color schemes were too muted. Some people may worry that this more vibrant world won't feel post-apocalyptic anymore. But from what I've seen in Punishing Grey Raven, I am very confident that, that was another games one too, can create all. a colorful yet haunting world. I forgot about Punishing Grey Raven. How is that game doing? How is that doing? Brightening up the gloomy areas will make the really serious locations stand out even more. Is it As if to prove my point, Kuro Games People then showed off various Bobby environments here. in the world, ranging from the lush to the desolate. To further yeah, improve true, the environments, weather has been added. We'll be able to experience both expected and unexpected types of weather in the game. We are truly weathering waves now. That's a pretty good one. That's pretty good. <laughs> my favorite point mentioned is that the weather will behave in certain ways during important plot points. If any of you have played <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers, you know why this has got me excited. They also talked about a new atmospheric system that will make textures richer and denser during particularly intense or important situations. Looking forward to that seeing that in action. Dim Forest was a location I really enjoyed from the first closed beta due to how vibrant and purple it was. And in the latest footage they showed like us, it looks so much more beautiful. They and that's the biggest every... thing th these games have going against it, man. Just like I remember Genshin had to overcome the Breath of the Wild stuff because everything in Genshin was like, oh, this reminds me of this Breath of the Wild thing. And I had to overcome that. These games have to overcome me going, that looks like Inazuma. That looks like this in Genshin. That looks like this in Genshin. The tree in it now has an individually It's such a big mountain appearance. to get over. I have no doubt that this will be a top tier location for taking screenshots with the in-game photo mode. The next thing the devs went on to address was the cutscene animations. The first closed beta test had rather stiff animations yeah, but and fewer cutscenes than expected. So Granted, was it was just the first beta test, but now- Is she a full-on lion? And fewer cutscenes than expected. Granted, it was- She's a full-on- Chat, that's a full-on tiger. This game looks good, I'm in. It was no, just the first beta test, but now the cutscenes take inspiration from popular animation in order to create the feeling of watching Free an anime. In. And from what's been shown up recently, I'd say tonight. their efforts have been a huge success. Minus waking up to Yang Yang boob first. Let's walk that back. So maybe this will be the Genshin killer. Every character will have a dungeon tied to their story. Previously, Dungeon was a standout for this concept, with the other character backstories only having rather underwhelming side She's missions. very pretty. Unique dungeons should help to make each character feel just as important Fuck as the next while fleshing out the world beyond what you can see on the surface. And speaking of which, the main story quest received a lot of flack before. Mm. I thought it had a lot of interesting things going for it, but the English translation of the first closed beta test absolutely felt machine translated. So it was difficult Hurry to infer whispers. meaning from it at times. It's cool. Those who could understand the story in native Chinese were critical, with complaints ranging from things like the major characters being too distrusting of the rover, to it just being boring. For the record, <laughs> I thought it was amazing that Chisia pulled a gun on the rover after first meeting them. That Spoilers, was man! How can I ever play? Now? Is she in love with her after pulling out the, the gun? Awesome. Due to all the negative feedback on the writing, the devs concluded that a complete story revamp was necessary. Over 90% of the story has been rewritten. Scripts, That's like voice more than acting, 80. and the cinematics all had to be thrown away and remade over the course like of Hong. just six months. For context, Withering Waves had been in development for two to three years before the first closed beta. Although I'm I worry worried about that. A little bit, this Six massive months? undertaking proves Kuro Games' commitment to for listening voice acting to feedback and, and improving the experience for everyone. Next, the most important topic was brought up, character changes. The individual characters have all had she their models great. and animations revamped. Now he looks amazing. We got a look at one of Sanhua's new idol animations Sanhua. where she forces herself to smile. Then a brief look at the characters that will be a
it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Available in the second closed beta test. Joy Yuan has changed significantly. As well as Yinlin, who is not just sporting a new outfit, but has elf ears now. This is great, by the way. <laughs> I feel I like that's the solution to a lot of things in this space. It's just to put elf ears on it. <laughs> just put elf ears on them. They're gonna love it. They're, they're gonna love this character. I love Boobs elf and elf ears. Please give us more elf characters, Kuro. As we've seen previously, <laughs> Young Young has a skirt now, as well as other subtle changes to improve her look overall. Rover's design was already peak, so both male and female versions only have minor wow, changes. Wow, okay, I like the main characters here. Main characters both are really clean. That is hella clean, male MC. Like the all black and gray, that is a, that's a really nice aesthetic. She looks great too, I think I like the male more. Bailian is called Baitsu now, and Baitsu? much like Yinlin, her outfit has changed completely. He looks Let's basic. I like the, the color scheme. It appears that every single female character has become noticeably more busty with more revealing outfits. I imagine this change was in response to player feedback as well. Of course that's a player feedback. Of course that was the feedback. Of course that was the feedback. Unfortunately, this has caused an effect of the women all looking very similar in shape to each other. Personally, I would appreciate more variety in this aspect. You know, yeah. like PGR. That looks pretty good, like PGR. Okay, I guess we have to try that game out. It's pretty highly praised in this video. The body diversity is kind of crazy here. Cause you have like a really busty builds, then really slim builds, and then like a nice middle of the ground. I don't know if you guys can see her or not, but this one right here is also like a more slim. Um, I'm a big fan of the far left. That's just me. The dev spoke about two brand new characters, Wait, starting with Lin Yang, Lin who Yang. I cannot forgive for replacing a Wu. The tiger's not in the game anymore? Okay, then I'm not playing. I would appreciate more variety in this aspect. You know, like PGR. That's middle ground. She's definitely the middle ground between these two, right? Like... The dev spoke about... Oh. Okay, to be fair, that looks way more natural. This look is way... I also like how they did the ears here. Uh, two brand new characters, starting with Lin Yang, who I cannot forgive for replacing a Wu. Next is Jin Shin, a master of mar- Wait, watch the boob physics on that one. It looked like Jello. Who I cannot forgive for replacing a Wu. Next is Jin Shin, <laughs> a master like of that? martial arts with an exclusive parry move. <laughs> Looks Big more natural than the other one, dude. She also can use her hair as a whistle, somehow. Is that even hair? <laughs> Moving right along, let's fire off some gameplay adjustments. That's Ultimate cool. attacks, known as resonance liberations, have better animations, camera angles, and sound effects. Running, evasion, and parrying have all been adjusted. Parrying? To feel I forgot that this game better. has parrying. Camera shake has been reduced, and enemy lock on tracking has been improved, which should prevent people from feeling unwell while playing. QTEs That's a good one. are now called intro skills and outro skills, and are unique for each character. Character abilities flow more seamlessly now and look great to control. I like the, the look of the movement. to talk about the changes to the ecosystem. Essentially, Withering Wave's monster capturing aspect, and one of my favorite features like a of Pokemon the first feature. beta. Echoes are not only used for their abilities, but they also oh. determine the stats of your characters, making them very important. Their attack animations have been revised, and there are now more convenient options for obtaining echoes. In Wait, so they are, they not only like buff you or give you things that relics would, but they attack abilities. too? HP attack, yeah, there's like relics basically they also or determine artifacts the stats of your characters making them very important their attack animations have been revised and there are now more convenient options for obtaining echoes in one example they show that the crownless echo can parry certain enemy skills which adds more strategies and options to that's battles. cool but having relics be a part of the gameplay is way cooler than i thought it'd be the most important new feature is that you can now encounter echoes with rare special color schemes these are, of course, just like shiny Pokemon. If searching for echoes with the best stats doesn't keep you busy oh. enough, hunting down these shiny echoes surely will. That's cool! In the first closed beta test, the only way to obtain echoes was to search around the open world for them. However, now you only have to acquire an echo once to unlock the ability to farm it by challenging tacit fields, huh. your stamina sink for withering waves. After the first closed beta test, Bugs I had on. a lot of critical feedback regarding the ecosystem, and I'm pleased to see that this important part of the game seems to have fixed most of its that problems. That looks sick. Like, I love There's no doubt that my monkey echo. Like that's my main right see there. That this important part of the game seems to have fixed most of its problems. 
I do hope that like if you like an echo like this and it's really cool for a character that's not limited for the type of character, but it's just like a good overall stat. It just depends on how you want to build your character to have more whatever, but it's probably going to be dependent upon what the character needs, like attack or HP or whatever. There's no doubt in my mind that Wuthering Waves is going to be a game that doesn't just look good, but feels good too. Even in the first that's closed a pretty positive outlook on the game. The simple act of moving around the world felt energetic and fun, and I expect that experience will only be intensified going forward. It's hard not to feel inspired by the sincerity and hard work of the devs after all That's the true. changes they've worked tirelessly to That's implement. That's true. I'm especially looking forward to learning more about the new playable characters. <laughs> and if you want to know more about them too, you should check out this video where I go through them in detail. Well, shit, man. I guess we got to look at that video too now. A new Withering Waves trailer just dropped in anticipation of the second closed beta test, and it's packed with reveals. Most notably, character reveals. Let's start with this severe looking man, Kakarot. Kakarot? Kakarot! Something snapped inside of me. I didn't care anymore. I didn't care about being better than Kakarot. Kakarot. He actually used to be an NPC in the first closed beta, what? and it looks like he's gotten a huge glow up on his way to becoming a playable, playable character. He's just a playable character now. Back he's a then, samurai. He had a pretty entertaining way of speaking, so Whoa. I hope his personality still surprises people. This waveform mark on his forehead is known as a tacit mark. He looks cool every as hell. Every playable character, every so-called resonator, has one. And you'll see them glow when they use their abilities. His whole body. What's interesting to me is the similarity between these tacit marks and this marking on enemy creatures who are called tacit it's already discords, lore being built. or TDs for short. Seeing this shadowy figure with Kakarot, who shares many features in common Kakarot. with TD, as well as Kakarot's transformed state also sharing these features, makes me extremely curious about his story and its implications for the world. Yo, Just no, I'm kind of hooked. I want to see more about that guy. That's an interesting build to a character. Also, he looks like Ansem or Xehanort or all the other versions from Kingdom Hearts. How much do Resonators and TDs have in common? On his outfit, you can find wave patterns at the bottom of his skirt, which is a theme you'll find you throughout the cast You gotta give credit to devs who put so much waves. work into this. There's no doubt that Kakarot is a good-looking character who will earn plenty of fans. Chiseled chest All and bulging abs aside, his white eyelashes add charm to his piercing blue eyes. I like that detail his too. His wonderfully flowing hair reaches all the way to his feet. His bangs look like he's <laughs> failed to keep them trimmed, and so he's pushed them back haphazardly with his hand. On a semi-related note, I think there might just be some overlap between people who love Sephiroth and people who love Kakarot. Next, we have this tiger boy, whose name hasn't appeared in any official capacity. Okay, I like the design for this character. I like it better than the other one, because the other one was just full on a tiger. This is kind of like a nice human, humanoid mixture with a tiger. Yet. This new guy has a lot of personality with so much energy behind every animation, and it really makes him stand out among the bunch. But I'll main him. <laughs> I'm happy for fans of this genre of character, but I'm unhappy for me, because it looks like he's completely replaced a Wu. Who is oh, easily cool. my favorite male character in the first closed beta test, despite oh, only whoa. being an NPC. They're both tigers and both use this exact dragon head. So I oh. think a Wu's demise is a foregone conclusion. No, they could make. Oh, he just blew up a Wu. Of course he's gone now. They could make a Wu work. A Wu could just be his dad. If it was a not playable NPC, they're going to make that work in the story somehow. And there's going to be something about him learning how to, the art of whatever he was carrying from his dad. But what if we had this new guy and a Wu? Yeah. I think that yeah. would be the best possible timeline Or like his brother. Everyone. Our third latest character is a kind looking lady with brilliantly long hair. Lion who dancing. apparently is taking yes. style tips from female rover. Damn. True, female rover. I like the her name, name the hasn't been revealed yet either, so it's for now, like I'm gonna call her Punchy Girl. Punchy Girl fights with her fists and has a strong yin and yang. Theme. I like that one. This theming can be seen in her earrings, in the dual colors of her hair, and even her entire outfit. And her animations, of course. If you're familiar with Kuro Games' other title, Punishing Red play Raven, you'll PGR. know that Kuro loves black and white character designs, and Punchy Girl feels like the culmination of that love. Black and white with a tiny bit They're of color splashed in know. It's absolutely water bags. classic Kuro. Her eyes are slightly terrifying, but Talk about in a way I enjoy. The red eyelashes help bring some color to her design, and the sharp cyan ring around the her water white bags. pupils allow them to pierce right through you. Playable characters with ridiculously long hair bring me a lot of happiness because I love seeing it bounce around behind them. The bouncier character. 
character's hair, the better they are. Hair, right. The first closed beta received some criticism for how like characters were to one another, and I'm happy to say this doesn't seem to be a problem anymore, especially thanks to the new designs. But to find out more about character changes, you're going to need to watch this video. Hmm. Bro, this creator is really good at like bringing you to the next video. I've watched two of her videos already. Wow, pretty good. Well, that Wuthering Waves looks really good. I'm not going to lie. I want to watch the trailer for it. This is this came out three days ago and it has 3.7 million views. Kiro Games. Somebody who could try to rival Genshin with a very similar format. Great first shot. <laughs> Main character wakes up on a beach to boobs. Hey, Miko, is that you? Whoa. Yeah, they improved the colors a lot here. It's not that same, like, really dull they had before. It's so vibrant. I'm, I'm glad they took... I know they like black and white a lot this company cure really loves black and white color scales but like how they've made the colors look here is really nice it just looks so much more depth in depth that looks like a tree out of Genshin. glider one hand some different collectible gliders would be cool too all right now that's just the chasm right there <laughs> That's just the chasm from another angle, brother. <laughs> Does it have English voicing yet? Damn, he looks cool. He looks evil. <laughs> Is that him? Is he a furry? It is! Uh. Yeah, these three are highlights of characters to start out with. I want to say that she's ch capturing her Pokemon here too. Or whatever they call it. Can we turn into animals is the question. Asking for a friend. Just wanna know. Look at the transformation. Damn, the pairing mechanic. So cool. Bro, you get to ride motorbikes as an anime waifu? Stop playing. Yeah, Don Hong got some competition. You got some competition. <laughs> Who is this? She looks like Noelle from Black Clover. Okay, they have a really big opportunity here. Look how many people have seen this thing, man. Three days, three million views. That's crazy. They have a really big opportunity. There's a lot of attention to detail here that I just don't feel we get too crazily often with Kenshin, unless I'm not like looking super into the faces and stuff. But like it's eyelashes and, and eyebrows, the um, apparel and also the like trinkets and jewelry look really nice. Don't get me wrong, Kenshin's got some great designs. But this feels like a, I don't know, a more modernized take on like apparel. Three gotchas is going to destroy me. I was kind of a little skeptic at first, but I mean, think about the combat too. You get to parry. You get to play a little bit differently. I feel like it's going to be a similar experience to Honkai Impact 3rd. 
where you can have a hack and slash experience with parrying and well, the boss fight looks amazing kingdom hearts ass <laughs> animation let's go back to that motorbike section like you're flying with the dragons zip lines we have that in kitchen but this what is this that looks good no wow that looks pretty good are you gonna watch the Wuthering waves dev stream that they posted how long is that one is this it 22 minutes i kind of just got a tldr on the last video we watched i feel like no matter how the game comes out it's impressive to me to see teams like doing work like this to try to make good games like this this is what i feel like not only the gotcha scene needs to push this like the standard forward it's what things in like the anime sphere like that type of game we if we imagine we had an open world game like this with just popular anime characters like how good it would really be so to see games get developed like this again and again and kind of get a little bit better each time tower of fantasy was uh, you know trying to do something genshin's done something all the hoyo games i feel like these kind of games should become the standard it's hard though because people in like asia and places where it's the most popular only really like mobile games i'll give it a go january 19th to february 11th march 19th so it's gonna be a couple more months i signed up for it already though